Oh, period dramas. Why do you hate corsets so? Audiences lust after silk gowns and lace shawls. Bridgerton viewers fantasise about visiting modiste to the ton Madame Delacroix for a gown of their very own. And a trip to the glorious Fords the Haberdasher in Austen's Emma would be a delight. But the idea of being laced into a corset is likely to leave viewers reaching for the smelling salts. Period dramas hate corsets, and they've taught their viewership to hate them too. Back in March 2022, when the new series of Bridgerton was released by Netflix, I wrote this article for The Conversation. I was inspired by the comments made by lead actress Simone Ashley, who bemoaned her experience of wearing a corset to Glamour magazine. Her verdict painted the corset as a torturous device which caused her a lot of pain and changed her body. This is a bit of a rite of passage for period drama leading ladies and Ashley is definitely not alone in finding her experience torturous. Even Gentleman Jack Saran Jones said that her corset gave her hives. Now, I'm sure that these actresses truly did feel this way about their corsets, and lots of other videos have been made about why this might be, from the quality of their corset fit and construction to the limited amount of time that actresses are given to get used to this new form of undergarment. But why are period dramas so intent on peddling this myth? So let's break this down a little and get back to the motivation behind this. There is an obsession with tight lacing. So this is the idea that corsets squeezed and compressed women's bodies, reducing their waist to nothing more than, in Lady Featherington's case, the size of an orange. So yes, tight lacing was absolutely a practice that some Victorian and Edwardian women engaged in. But taking this niche practice and applying it as common practice to all women of the past is just another example of how history is often thought of as one big homogenous thing where all the women of the past were horribly oppressed until we found enlightenment in the present day. But time does not work like that, and I'm afraid that we're not on a lovely linear path to being better than our ancestors. Do you really think that all women of the past would have put their bodies through this torture? No. Historical women were smart. Saying that corsets were bad because some women tight-laced is like saying that all shoes are bad because some are incredibly high heels. That does not mean that we stop wearing shoes, does it? Or that your trainers have the same impact on your feet as your fanciest heels. So what is so appealing to period drama makers about this corset myth? Well, it has a really particular narrative function, much like the not like other girls trope. Constrained by her corsets, the not like other girls heroine has been inhibited, controlled and crushed by her corsets. This scene is ubiquitous in period dramas from Elizabeth Swan fainting in Pirates of the Caribbean, to Rose DeWitt Bucketer unable to breathe in Titanic, and of course the iconic scene where Scarlett O'Hara clings to a bedpost in Gone with the Wind. It's on screen shorthand for the restricted lives of historical women. If a woman casts off her corsets, it's a symbol of her embarking on her journey to a wonderful feminist idyll. Mm. But all of this stems from a fundamental misunderstanding of both historical corsets and women. After centuries of women, and some men don't forget, wearing corsets to support and smooth the body, it was Victorian men who taught us to hate corsets. So far from being feminist beacons, period dramas are perpetuating Victorian misogyny. 
Victorian doctors decided to blame women and their corsets for all the ailments that they didn't understand. The list of medical complaints that 19th century doctors attributed to the corset seems unending. Constipation, postpartum infection, pregnancy complication, tuberculosis, these were all blamed on the corset. One Victorian doctor, Benjamin Orangeflower, excellent name, wrote a pamphlet in 1892 called Fashion Slaves and claimed that, quote, if women will continue this destructive habit, the race must inevitably deteriorate. Lovely, lovely man. Mm. So, of course, now the medical root of these illnesses has been identified or is at least better understood, and the corset's culpability is proved. The corset is a really strong example of gender bias within medical research. When we look at men who wore corsets, like the perpetually unhealthy George IV, their ailments were never really blamed on corset wearing. Yet, at the same time as corsets are being blamed for ruining women's health, some corsets were specifically designed to be healthy and supportive. Lingerie company Gossards published Corsets from a Surgical Perspective in 1909, which promoted the flexibility and supportive possibilities of the corset, which could, quote, preserve the lines demanded by fashion, but without discomfort or injury. But this is all about Victorian corsets, and period dramas like Bridgerton are set in a fantasy version of the Regency period. The hourglass shape of the late 19th century was not what women of the Regency were aiming for. They were only interested in their breasts. Breasts needed to be lifted and separated into two round orbs. Regency corsets, or stays as they were generally known at the time, were often short, always soft and never heavily boned. Their purpose was bust support, never restriction. There is literally no point restricting the waist or having one the size of an orange, sorry Lady Featherington, when it is hidden under the billowing empire line skirts of the Regency. And I do wonder what Regency women would have thought of modern bras with straps that pinch and underwire that rubs. Historical corsets were ingenious. Whalebone, which is baleen from the mouth of a whale and not actual bone, is wonderfully flexible and moulds to the body beneath it. And many corsets were simply reinforced with things like cotton cording. Corsets reduced back pain from bad posture and some had expanding portions for pregnancy. But I am not going on a historical accuracy crusade here. I've already made it clear how I feel about historical accuracy as a concept. Bridgerton's costumes are historically inspired fantasy. Bridgerton is to Regency England what Game of Thrones is to the Wars of the Roses, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The idea that its costumes should be historically accurate, or that such an aspiration is even possible, is not what is at stake here. This is not an issue of historical accuracy, but one of historical fallacy. Women of the past had agency over their bodies and how they were dressed. They were clever about how they achieved the fashionable proportions. They padded out the hips and bust and aimed for the right proportions rather than to reduce the waist. Corsets were a supportive tool and women as both makers and wearers had agency in shaping what that tool did to their bodies. We strip away that agency and ingenuity when we assume that historical women were passive dolls, dressed up and cinched in by a patriarchal society. For historical women, corsets were a support garment, which allowed them to follow the fashionable silhouette without having to diet and exercise or have cosmetic surgery. It would be a refreshing change to see period dramas embrace this feminist history of the corset, instead of falling back on a misogynistic stereotype.